welcome to Backyard Bows. Welcome to Backyard Bows. I'm Brandon. Today we got the limited edition smoke from Expedition. Uh, I've been wanting to shoot this thing ever since I first saw it online on the field and stream when they first came out with all the bows for 2022. Uh, they gave like a really great review on this and uh, it just kind of intrigued me. And then also you guys have requested this bow I think more than any other bow that we have done this year. So first thing, Expedition as a company, fairly new company, only 10 years old. I think it was originally uh, created by some aerospace engineers, they said, that uh, on their downtime created bows for fun, ended up coming out with some great products, made it into a company. It eventually, and that was in South Dakota in 2013. And then uh, I think in 2018, it was repurchased by another guy uh, that's out of Iowa. And they now own several different small companies. They're growing. I love to see that. You'll hear me say it all the time. I want as many bow companies as possible creating many different things, getting innovative, creative, and then letting us choose as hunters. Uh, and that's what we're here to do is help you kind of distinguish and create some space between each company. But I love that this is a smaller company that is doing well. I think they had a hard year last year and I'll let you know why. Um, maybe you had a hard time getting a bow or fulfilling orders if you're a, uh, um, a bow shop or a dealer. And it's because they, they created a riser made out of magnite alloy um, which is supposedly lighter than carbon, uh, stronger than aluminum, uh, and then there was a supply shortage. I think COVID hit, and I think that kind of crushed that supply line. And then on the opposite side, they maybe didn't realize how many people were gonna be interested in wanting to purchase this bow and they could not fulfill orders um, with the material that they chose. So then they switched back this year to aluminum. But I do think in the future, they're gonna try and um, kind of circle back to that magnite alloy and I cannot wait for that. I can't wait to get one of those in my hand. Uh, this is not the flagship bow, this is the smoke. So the flagship bow is the MX32. Um, they also have the LFX, the APX, and the Experience. So they got several bows now. Um, this is the limited edition one. It had those really high speeds. So this is the one that we got in here to review first this year for Expedition. <clears throat> Some specs, 32 inches axle to axle, right above what I usually like to see. I usually top out at about 31. Um, it's a little heavier than I, than I would like to, or what it looks online. When you look at a picture of it online, it looks, for some reason to me, it looked like it'd be real light. Then when I finally got it in my hand, it's really thick. There's a lot to this riser. These two devil bridges are real thick and wide. Uh, just a lot of substance to it and fully dressed up. I mean, it, it, it's a nice, nice weighing bow. 4.4 uh, pounds is what they say. It was a little bit over that. Uh, the draw length, which is a hybrid cam, um, so there's no module system. Um, whatever draw length you get, 28, 28 and a half, 29, 29 and a half, or 30, so it's nice and short um, you know, range. But whatever you get, they're gonna put the cams to that uh, 60 and 70 pound option. So it's very limited, and obviously with it being limited edition, I think they just tried to cater to uh, fewer hunters. Um, first thing that stood out to me was this extremely it's probably the, the most reflexed riser that we've had in here yet this year. Uh, obviously that's gonna give it a 5.2 inch brace height, 5.3 inch brace height, really nice and short, which is gonna help it get those high speeds. 370 is what it says online. An honest assessment from the rep that I got to talk to, which their customer service was great. I talked to a guy named Hunter. He kind of answered all my questions, took my phone conversation. He said it's more like 365, which I like that he said that. Uh, and he kind of stopped me and said, actually, it's more like 365, honestly. So um, let's go over the whole bow, riser. I love the finish on it. We didn't get it in that smoke color, but we got it in this kind of this gray tan. Um, two burger holes for your rest. The grip, not sure about the grip. We'll have to shoot it a bunch to kind of see. I love this uh, limb pocket. It has two bolts that actually go through each limb and that attach onto the limb pocket. I haven't seen that yet. I love that. Anything that's nice and secure. These dampeners are as solid as you can get. Um, you know, and so sometimes we see them really jelly-like jelly and then sometimes they're like hard as a rock. So these ones are really nice and solid. Um, the cable guard on this thing, I, I absolutely love it. It's nice and secure. Two roller balls, or two roller guards on here. Really nice and solid. The whole bow together, yeah, 
quality wise is great. These cam systems, they kind of have a little funky shape to them. And I think that's probably something they played around with just to get this smooth draw. Cause as you know, any company that produces a speed bow, they're going to claim that it's the smoothest, smoothest draw, best hold uh, for those high speeds. So we will see here in a second. So there's also on the cam system, there's a draw stop, which you can play with a little bit. And that will also adjust your let off from 75 to 80. So there's a little bit of fluctuation there. <clears throat> the main reason I got this bow was to see if the speed was accurate. I, I mean, 370, that is humming. So we're going to do that right after we do this single shot assessment, our talking points, and we'll go outside and do our freestyle shoot. Um, but man, so shout out to Flat Creek Archery over in Illinois. These guys uh, were the only person close to us that was able to find this bow for me. They drove it all the way over to St. Louis to me to drop it off. Uh, so shout out to you guys. Thanks for working so hard to get me what we're wanting. Um, again, you guys as consumers, uh, this was the most requested bow from this year. Every time we asked what bow you want to see next, there was at least 10 to 12 people that mentioned they wanted to see the smoke. So, but I can tell you just from the couple shots I've already shot with it, Expedition is not lying. This thing is unbelievably smooth and effortless to draw to get these speeds. First thing you feel when you pick up the bow is it is so top heavy. Obviously that reflex, you got a whole bunch of that riser sticking out in front. And man, so I put a longer stabilizer on it to kind of balance some of that out in full draw. Um, but that's the first thing that you notice. This thing just wants to topple over forward. Another thing I'll mention, when I tried to put it in the press with these fingers that came uh, on the press, this thing is already, it's pretty much already pressed. It's already past vertical. So those fingers didn't work. I, I did it about halfway and then I got sketched out. Uh, it looked like they were slipping, so I had to take it to a bow shop where they had different fingers that were able to put my peep and stuff in. But so I had a little bit of help setting this one up. But let's go ahead, we'll sling a couple. Man, I'm, it does have a, a, a generous valley to it. But it is smooth, as smooth as you can get. And so, you know, when I think of this, when you look at the bow, you imagine a different draw. Uh, and then when you draw it for the first time, you're like, wow, that was not at all what I was thinking. Um, so as you draw it back and get set up, the balance of the bow is better. Now, it kind of gets back there. Again, it has a generous valley, a little pop to it at the end. Uh, and the only other thing after shooting it the first time, I ordered the 30 inch draw length, but man, it is more like 29 and a half, to be honest. Uh, it's a little shorter than I was expecting. And again, when you order these, you order them to a specific draw length that you can't change. Um, so that was the only thing on it that I thought was a little bit different. Um, the grip, not my favorite. Uh, I, I, I can't tell you why, it's just not something that I, I don't know if that's how all Expedition bows are, but that's not my favorite grip on here. It's really slick sides, like little slick pieces of metal on each side where I feel like it should be something that grips a little bit better. But uh, the bow's balance overall in full draw um, is nice. It kind of has a nice platform. Uh, it sets up nice. A lot of substance to the bow, it is nice and heavy. Uh, but that balancing issue kind of fades away once you get it back. The one thing I will tell you, and I'm not going to do it on camera because man, it almost ripped my shoulder out of socket. When I did have to put one back down when I was trying to fix and align my peep, um, bringing this back, it's so smooth on the drawback. It has a really nice solid back wall, but once you go back the other way, those, rever those cams reversing will rip your shoulder out of socket. I'm telling you, it, it was, it was crazy how much this thing jerked me forward. And that again, that's why we're gonna get these speeds. Um, but overall, man, this is, this is a sweet bow. It's pretty impressive, the draw cycle on this thing for what it's supposedly gonna get once we run it through the, the chronograph. So we'll do one last one. It has a nice snap to it, kind of at the end. It gives you a little jerk when it gets back, but once it's back, it's nice and solid. It balances well. I can't wait to get outside and shoot this. Let's set up for the chronograph speed test and then we'll go outside and sling some. All right, so time for the truth. This will be the fastest bow supposedly that we have done this year. This thing, if I was to guess an honest assessment, I think it'd be just from the couple poles I've, I drew back 305 to 310. We'll see. 
30, uh, 500 grain arrow, 30 inch draw, more like 29 and a half to be honest. 80% uh, let off. Um, man, we'll see, we'll see. But just from the couple pulls already, uh, you can tell an arrow is about to come off this thing with some speed. Two ninety nine. So uh, I'm gonna say let's get it. Let's get it warmed up. Two ninety nine. I think this thing will climb a little. Um, man, that is fast. Three oh two. Both of those shots were a little low in the chronograph. Let me try to get one right in the dead center, and I think it's gonna be right at 305, which is what I guessed. <laughs> 311. <laughs> this thing is humming. Uh, 311 for the pull, for the draw cycle on this bow, for it to be shooting this 500 grain arrow, 311 feet per second, is incredible. Uh, and I'm just gonna give it up to the shape of this cam. It's just this, you can tell that they kind of probably went to the drawing board a couple times and created kind of a shape that just allowed this thing to flow backwards. But uh, for the reflex, brace height, everything on this bow to be what it is, for it to have that draw cycle and to be shooting these speeds is un unbelievable to me. Uh, that was a malfunction. Let's go ahead and shoot one more. 311 was the last one we got. I'm still thinking more consistently, probably around 305. 301, yep, that's awesome. Let's go outside. I'm gonna pepper some critters with this. I'm not necessarily a guy who cares a lot about speed. If you watch my videos, that's obvious. Um, so I can't really speak from experience. So if you're, if you're needing the speed or you think you need the speed for a boar, cape buffalo, elk, moose, something big, I understand that if you think you need a, um, you know, this speed and this kind of kinetic energy that this is bringing for um, whitetail, you know, anything, any, any kind of medium or small game animal, you're mistaken. Uh, I got a buddy who just shot a V3, 63 pound draw weight, uh, clean through a, a bison. You know, so you don't, uh, this speed to me is unnecessary. Uh, and there's some guys out there that will speak on speed and how you need the fastest bow. And I guess this would be the, the most appealing to them. This is a nice solid bow all around. Uh, again, I'm pleasantly surprised with the draw cycle. We'll, we'll see about the hold here in a second when we really start shooting, but, but it's a nice bow to shoot. And uh, for it to get that 311 with this 500 grain arrow is so impressive. Excessive, but impressive. Uh, so we'll go bore, then we'll go to the buck. So, I, I mean, this thing shoots absolute missiles. Um, the noise on it, surprisingly, is just a little bitty dunk. You know, uh, not something that is, is noticeable to me. You do have some vibration in your hand given. Uh, another thing that I'll point out, the only veins, only arrows I was able to use on here, uh, you know, you gotta use ones with blazer veins. Anything that was over, you know, two inches, this brace height is so short and my, it was like almost hitting my wrist. I mean, there's very any clearance uh, with that 5.3 inch brace height. So, uh, you know, that's something else that I noticed. Um, Let's go to the buck. Now we'll jump over to that coyote. So a boar at 25 buck at 30, and now we'll go to a coyote at 35. Something else with these speed bows that get such high speeds. I'll use that 20 yard pin for 20, 25, 30, 35, making a little minor adjustment. Uh, maybe shooting a high 20 um, for the 35. But I mean, these things, the, they get no arc. I mean, it, it is a string. It's on a string from me to the target. It's really impressive, you know, the arrows that fly off this. Um, you ready, honey? All right, so we got a coyote. Man. 
man. Let's, uh, let's hop over. We'll do some longer range shots. I think speed bows are some of my favorite bows to review solely for the purpose that every company that, that comes out with a speed bow claims the same thing. You got the smoothest draw, the best hold on the fastest bow. Um, and obviously every company can't have all three of those. Some of them's IBO or a little bit fluctuate like this. It says 370, an honest assessment from a rep was 365. This is one of the fastest bows, if not the fastest bow we've had in here. Um, I would say the other claims of it being smooth, it's incredibly smooth on the way back. And I say that with uh, kind of factoring in that this is a speed bow with a small brace height. You know, I mean, it's really pumping an arrow, so it's not necessarily effortless. And if someone goes and picks up this bow and you think, oh man, this wasn't like Brandon said, just keep it in mind, I I'm factoring in that it is a speed bow. So for a speed bow, it's incredibly smooth. Um, let's go turkey. And we'll go to that broadhead buck, which is at 30. And then we'll go to Mama Black Bear at 40 and then get up to the elk at 50. The only thing, the only thing that I kind of am not liking is it has a generous valley. Uh, and man, when it hits that let off, um, you know, it's set at 80, but it kind of feels more like 90% let off. I mean, it, it, it's a little pop at the end. I, I don't like that. I like it smooth all the way back. Um, but again, with a speed bow, factoring that in, it's pretty impressive, the draw cycle on this. Um, I would say the hold is right in the middle. It's not the best hold for a speed bow. Um, I think I like the Omen a little bit more from PSE. Uh, I think it held just a little bit better in full draw. This does have a really nice solid back wall, but as I mentioned aside, if you even hesitate for a second and relax, this thing will rip your shoulder out of socket. Um, let's go one more on the broad head buck. And again, as I always mention, the farther out you get, uh, the more you'll be able to tell how steadily these pins hold at full draw. You know, in every bow, the pins will move some. Um, you know, you just like to see them dial down quickly um, and obviously not a ton of movement. So I think this is, you know, starting at the 40, you can start to tell, and then really up at the 50, you can really tell uh, kind of how quickly they're gonna dial down. Man, I love uh, testing these speed bows. I love getting them out here in the backyard and kind of seeing these shots. Even at 40, I mean, it's right there. there. There's no arc to these arrows at all. These things are humming. Uh, all right, let's set up. We'll get up to the elk and then we'll sit down and give it a grade. So I'll also make a personal statement of what I think with Expedition in this bow. I think this bow pulled Expedition out of, a, out of a tight spot. I think they were really hurting with not being able to fulfill those orders, probably having to refund a lot of people. There was also a comment I heard about maybe um, a shipment of risers um, had to be recalled. Um, and then they might have changed the manufacturer supply chain or something. But I think several things happened. So if you had been looking for a bow in 2021 or 2022, and it was hard for you to find, again, I would just say be patient. Every company goes through transition periods, especially once they're bought. Um, but I think at, in a whole, I think Expedition is gonna be a, a company to look for in the future. I can't wait to get my hands on their flagship bow from this year. And then also any bow that uses that new material for this, for the riser. I, I'm excited for that too. So I'm excited for things to come from them. Um, and again, it's hard for me to be patient too and not just write companies off when I, when, you know, when I'm trying so hard to get my hands on a bow and I have such trouble doing it. Um, 
but then I got to slow down, be a little patient, and just re realize that you know every company goes through some things. Uh, hopefully, they come out on the other end and, and keep producing some great quality gear for us. Let's go elk at 50. get that one up a hair. Um, so I'm using what I would normally use. I don't change the pins a ton on this because they're easily adjustable. I'll just side in the 20 and 30 on a different bow and I usually can switch it over and everything mostly stacks up all the way up to the 50 with minor adjustments. I'm actually shooting at that 50 yard elk with the 40 yard pin with this bow. So that gives you an idea of how, you know, those feet per second Man, it's, it's, it's incredible how little arc there is to this thing. So that's just a high, still using that 40 pin, just a little bit higher 40 pin shot. I mean, that's, I wish you could bring the camera over here and look this way. Uh, these arrows are on a string. And honestly, now that I'm out to the 50, not that I want to retract what I said completely, but I do think uh, these ones I can't use again because those veins are so long. That brace size is so short, they keep hitting that rest. Um, but, you know, the hold on this at 50, usually on, some, on a speedboat like this, short brace height, you know, I can get them dialed down, but it takes a second. This one, you know, just shooting those last three shots fairly quickly. They dial down pretty quickly. I mean, the hold on this, I'm gonna kind of retract what I said. I think that is a little bit nicer, um, you know, now that I've really been shooting on that, that 50 elk, which we'll do a lot more today, but I do, I do like the way that just held. So we're gonna shoot a whole, whole bunch today. We're gonna fling a ton of arrows through this thing, and then we'll come back this evening and we'll sit down and give this thing a grade. But man, what a cool first bow from Expedition. All right, so I had to put a little bit of extra thought into this one before I gave it this final grade. Um, so I kind of, I slept on it. Uh, 311 is what this thing topped out on. And, and some people would say the inconsistency of those spe the, that speed test. I think inconsistency to me is more when it jumps up, jumps down, jumps up, jumps down. Uh, if a bow climbs, I think that's normal in a way. I think bows can, can kind of warm up a little bit. Um, and I think it's okay if they climb a hair. So 310 is, or 311 is what it topped out at. Incredible, fastest bow we've seen in here yet. I figured it would be the fastest, but I didn't think that it would be a whole 10 feet per second faster than the next bow. So 12 out of 10 right off of the bat. Quality, I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. So I think this bow right under like the Safari from Matthews that's not a carbon is probably one of the best quality bows that we've seen. Cable guard system is extremely secure, solid. You got these two anchoring bolts on each limb, top and bottom, that are anchoring this thing down. And I think they're doing that because there is already so much press to this bow. As I mentioned earlier, the fingers I had couldn't even go into, uh, I couldn't even press it. So there's already so much stress right here. That's where I think they did that. But I love that. I mean, this gives this thing no room to slide up and down. The, the riser itself is unbelievably solid. Um, huge double bridge, little pickle holders, top and bottom. Uh, nice thick nice thick grip, um, which it wasn't my favorite, but I think they secured the center of this, which is usually kind of the weak point of the bow for that very reason, just because this thing has so much strain to it. Um, techno uh, appeal, I gave it a seven. Not my favorite looking bow. This thing is, this huge reflex, uh, I think the riser itself, it's just not, it's, it's not, it's not, not my style, but um, again, I'm not necessarily a speedboat guy. So seven out of 10 there, eight out of 10 for the technology. I was teetering seven and eight, but I think just the ingenuity, call it, to get this thing up to those speeds as smooth as it is, I think that's technology in itself. So we gave it eight out of 10. Um, and then I gave it a nine out of 10 for performance. So. 
I think as I shot it more and more, I realized the hole that full draw was better and better and better. It was, it, the, the stability of this bow is great for a speed bow. The draw is incredibly smooth for these speeds that it's getting. Um, so factoring all of that in, that's where that nine out of 10 comes from. I shot incredibly well from this thing right from the bat. Um, awesome, awesome bow from Expedition. I cannot wait to get my hands on another one, maybe their flagship bow, um, some of that new material for the risers. So Expedition, send me something over. Uh, I wanna see more from Expedition for sure uh, this year. And then obviously when they start coming out with these newer bows, um, get, get my hands on some of those as well. So 45 gets a plus two for, it's right around a thousand bucks. So a thousand between 1500, you get make up for two points. Anything under that, you get make up for three. Anything over 1500, only get to make up for one. Um, so 47 out of 50, 94 overall rating. Awesome, awesome first bow from Expedition. This thing is uh, limited edition, sold out. I'll probably hold on to it for a while uh, and then throw it up on eBay and I'm, I'm sure I'll be able to get more money than I paid for it eventually. Um, follow us on YouTube, Instagram, see what we've already put out, see what's to come. We got so much in the works. Uh, we've had such a blast doing this, so stay tuned. Keep following along. Above all else, make sure you get your reps in on the daily. We'll see you next Saturday.